This is J. Krishnamurti's first public discussion in Madras, 1972. What shall we talk over together this morning? <coughs> the word discussion is really misused. It really should be a dialogue, a conversation between two friends who are quite good friends, to talk over things together, their own problems. And so, in friendship and companionship, I think we should talk over these matters that may be of some concern. So what should we talk about? We will discuss the question of memory. Discuss. Whether memory could be dispensed with at all in our activities. Shall we discuss that? Yes, sir. Any evidence of that? What, sir? <coughs> Don't get up, sir. It's not worth it. See, if it's a slightly allowed thinking of the many that we gather after your lecture last evening, the point, in fact, is this. Man as such. Sir, please. No, no, I'm only trying to explain the whole thing so no, that no, you can no, no, tell it more in my No, I understand, sir, but yes, sir. we will have to make it brief. Yes. The man is in the Morris now. He has to be drawn out. Not of his own choice is in there, but of the conditions beyond the circumstances. Like the mind. See, fit in with all the information that he has gathered for all the ages. So what are you trying to say, sir? I am trying to tell you whether there are any rudimentary methods by which quite a large number of people will be able to follow the path that you suggest just now. All right, sir. <laughs> what, sir? I deal with the of God and man. How can politicians be doctors at the same time? You call this fragmentation. Organization of mind and body is real and necessary in life. God. What causes fragmentation? Is that it, sir? Fragmentation. Politician and yeah, Please, please, don't read it again. Is it you're asking why does this fragmentation take place? between God and man, between man and man, and so on? Is that the question, sir? Brahman, how do you f- accept, how do you expect, or rather, how do you explain the present state of the world? Is that it? Yeah, exactly. The cause for which they Yes, the I think. The yes. The yes. So, what shall we discuss? <laughs> One more. <laughs> Please explain the need for change. I'll explain need for change. Yes, would you discuss what do you mean by observation? Well, sir, why is it that we are not in contact with the actual, but only in the image all the time? <laughs> yes, sir. In your last talk, you mentioned the necessity for observing fear, not analyzing and creating an analyzer and an yes. analysis. In that observation of fear, which can only exist in time, when you when you observe fear, then you're in the field of time, then you're having a division. So that should we discuss this question of observation? Would that be of interest? We are involved in the competitive world. And we observe the fact that we are competitive, you are supposed to be competitive. 
and then how mere observation resolves the problem and what do we mean by resolving it? What do I what do we mean by resolving the problem? Yes. Through observation. <coughs> What's that? The other day you said when you observe or investigate a thing, we got to forget the past reference made about it, or the knowledge we have about it, or what other people say about it. What do you mean to say is when you observe a thing, you got to observe it with your own capacity, your own thinking, and your own way of thinking, or make it. I feel that if everything is observed by many or not by one, and if man says whatever it is in the target of observation, he can understand it better. Since things in life have deep values and they have depth in them, it's not easy for one man to investigate it at the same time and not to, and he, can, he can't do it fully. That's what I feel, sir. Right, sir. One question here. What is the purpose of life? <laughs> what is it? That's not man What is it? What is it? That's not animal struggle. Sir, sir, sir. You're what? Struggle. What? Struggle. Sir, sir, what is the purpose of life? Sir, 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 sir. Did you hear what I said at the beginning of the discussion? We said we are talking of, as two friends over their problems, friends who are go good friends, who don't shout at each other, <laughs> who don't put absurd questions to each other, who are concerned with their own problems, not about somebody else's problem. They want to talk things over amicably, with a sense of good humour and feeling. And that's what we are trying to do. And if you try to... If you ask questions which you have already prepared, <laughs> written down, it seems rather awkward to answer those questions. So, if you don't mind, shall we... Do we discuss, talk over together, this question of observation? Yes, sir. Would that be of... Right. I don't Do we discuss then this whole question of observation? Would that be of in general interest? All right. The word theory, if you look up in a good dictionary, means observation. Theoria, Greek, and which means to observe, to have an insight. Not what we have made that word into, a theory, as a speculative abstraction. The word theory means to observe, to have an insight. How do we have an insight to any problem? Insight, you understand what I mean by that word? Need I, need I explain the meaning of that word? To have an insight, which means to have sight in. You understand? That is, to comprehend observe, learn about something by looking, having sight inside the thing, inside the problem. Hmm? That is, theory means observation, having an insight. Now we are talking about observation, having an insight into things. How does this observation take place? How do you observe? 
Let's begin very, very, very simply, because as we go along, it will become very complex. So let's begin very simply. How do you observe? What is the process of your observation, of your seeing? Go on, sir, this, with two friends. You are not my enemy, I am not your enemy. Two friends talking over. How, how do you observe? How do you observe the speaker? I'm sitting here. You give your attention to him. Oh, sir? You give your attention to him. You give your attention to him. No. I'm asking, how do you observe the speaker? How do you look at him? Open the eyes and look at him. <laughs> of course, open your eyes and look. If you are awake, what will you, how do you look? You Without keep. Judgment. Huh? Without judgment. Now, do you observe the speaker without any judgment? Be, be factual, please, otherwise, it is no point. Do you observe the speaker sitting here without any, a conclusion? With, Usually, by name. Huh? Usually by name. Name, name. By name. So, first, you observe through the name, do you? Huh? Label, he said. What, sir? Label, sir. The label, a name. So, is the name the person? Go on. No, go explore, sir. Don't just. <laughs> so, is the person who is sitting in front of you at this moment, unfortunately, in a lovely morning? <laughs> How do you observe him? The, the name? You have a conclusion about him? Oh, the love of God, sir. Do, please. What, sir? So you are observing the words, huh? No, sir. I'm asking something much simpler than that. How? You observe as a whole your speech and their body. No, sir. You are self-enlightened. Huh? Self-enlightened. Don't you have an image about the speaker? Huh? The image being the reputation, what he has said, what he has written, what other people have said or disagreed and so on. You have an image about that person, don't you? Be simple, sir. The image being the label, the name, the reputation, the history, the myth around him, right? So you look at him through that image, through that screen, through that verbal abstraction, right, sir? Huh? Do you? Be let's uh, we're talking. Don't be. A... So, when you observe a person or a thing or a machine. You have an image about that person, or a symbol, or an idea through which you are looking, right? No? When you look at a mountain, you have an idea of a mountain, don't you? And you, you, the verbal recognition of that thing called mountain, through that verbal image, you look. So we look through words, through conclusions, through ideas, through labels, right? So. 
observation means doesn't it then looking through a screen of words conclusions opinions judgments like and dislike and so on right that is simple enough now what takes place when you do that when you have a screen between you and me a verbal screen what takes place I am asking, sir, what takes place when you have a screen between you and me? A screen. Be simple, sir. You only see the screen, don't you? <laughs> oh, for the love of God. Oh, vigorously, right, sir. <laughs> Translucent, opaque, slightly distorted, not clear. So you see the person through the screen. Hmm? So you really see the screen first and then the person after. If the screen is very heavy, you don't see the person at all. If it is slightly opaque, then you see the distorted image, right? So you really never see the person if there is a screen at all, right? That's a simple fact, right, sir? Now, can you look at a human being without that screen? I said, look, I asked you a question. I said, can you look at a human being, at your wife, without that screen? No. Wait, you say no. Why not? I got the mental image already. Oh, sir, please. If I don't have the memory playing on it, I have no interest. I don't look at it. That's right. Which means, sir, uh, what? What is what is the screen, right? Just please, sir, look. don't jump into this. So we are we are examining slowly. What is this screen composed of? Made up? What makes a screen? Preconceived ideas. What? Have you preconceived ideas about your wife? Oh, sir, you are talking just verbal nonsense, just words, words. I am asking something and you are saying something else. What is the screen made up of? Memory of past experience. That's right, isn't it? Be simple, sir. I have a screen about you because I have been introduced to you. I know your name, so that the name, the incident has left a mark which is the memory, which is the past, and through that memory I look at you. So, the memory, the experience, the knowledge is the past, and through that sc or that screen is between you and me. So, the screen is the past. Right? <coughs> Don't agree with me, please. Watch it yourself. Uh, if one is married, 
I don't know why you marry, but that's matter. <laughs> if one is married and had a wife, you have lived together. Sex, irritations, annoyance, pleasure, hurts, prejudices. You have built up this memory about her and she about you through years. Thicker and thicker the screen grows. Right, sir? That is the memory you have accumulated through time, and that is the screen between you and the wife, or the wife and the husband. Right, sir? Now, that is the past. That is time. Right? Right, sir? Now, what takes place? when you have this screen between you and another. What takes place? What, sir? You adapt to the moon. Oh, my God. Observation is limited. Have you removed your, sir? That's the trial now. What? That's the trial now. You are trying it now? Why? You just look through. Sir, I must tell me, marry your own happy day. Sir, please, sir. Either you discuss, either we talk together about facts as they are and not invent theories, no, uh, con- abstractions. So let us stick to facts as they are. If I have a wife, I have an image about her, which I have put together through the years that I have lived with her, right? That image is the memory that I ha- mind has accumulated during the past fifty years, <coughs> right? Or ten days, that's good enough. And through that memory, or that memory is the screen. That's simple enough. Now, that memory is time, right? I want want to go on, I don't want to stop in one place. (laughs) That thing is time. So I am looking at her through the past, a series of images, a series of conclusions in which are included hurts, pleasures, annoyances, disturbance, jealousy, anxiety, if all that is the screen I have between me and her. Now, what takes place when I have the screen between her and me? What takes place? Division. Huh? Division. Do you know that? As a fact, or you just as an idea in talking about it? Do you know as a fact, fact, not an imagination, that when you are a Hindu and I'm a Muslim, there is a division? That's a fact. You say, how appalling. His habits and his customs, he's not mine, you discard. So, What takes place when there is this division between you and the wife, or between you and the speaker? The screen divides, doesn't it? Right? Right, sir? Screen divides. Now, what takes place when there is division? Be clear from your heart, say this. There is no relationship. Conflict arises. Conflict, doesn't it, sir? Yes, sir. You are a, I am a Muslim and you are a Hindu, and we have conflict. So, conflict is inevitable where there is division between you and me, right? Right, sir? Now, why does the mind accumulate this memory in relationship. Security. 
Yes, let's investigate a little more. Why does this memory come into being between you and me? It's more pleasant than the reality. What? It's more pleasant than the reality. Than reality. More pleasant than the reality. My wife is ugly, and the reality of the image which I had about her when she was young is better than what she is now. <laughs> No, don't me. Don't laugh. You, this is what you are doing. Sir, I have admiration for her. The more I look at her, I have admiration. Good, good. Admiration. That's another form of screen. <laughs> so, habit. That is another form of screen. So what? So I see, in observing, you understand, sir? I am observing the process of relationship between two people, and in that observation I see how memory of past incidents, experiences and knowledge, which is really time, divides people. Right, sir? Now, why does the mind create the gather this memory? But do please look look at yourself. Don't answer me. I'm good at answering. Don't answer me. Why does this memory? Why is this memory accumulated? Huh? That lady suggested security. What do you mean by security? Come on, sir. Not to be disturbed. Huh? Not to be disturbed. To perpetuate pleasure. Please, we are trying to understand why the mind accumulates memories in relationship. We are talking of relationship. We'll discuss later the necessity of accumulation as knowledge in the field of action, driving a car, um, electronic thing, this and so on. We'll come, to, we'll come to that presently. So we say the mind accum you are saying the mind accumulates this memory in order to be secure in relationship. Is that it? Am I gather, have I gathered this memory about my wife in order to be secure? In order not to be disturbed? In order not to face the fact that she is not as she was? Is that the reason I do it? But sir, I'm I'm full of motive. <laughs> Why do I have this accumulation of memory about her? Is it not a natural process? Is it not a natural process? Is it natural? I'm not saying it is natural or it's. Why do we do it? Why does the mind do it? Look, sir, I insult you. You have a memory of that. Why do you have a memory of that? Do, do watch it, sir. I insult you. I call you something. And you. I don't want to be insulted. Oh, sir? I, I noticed that it's a self-defense mechanism. Self-defensive mechanism. Because I think that the other person tends to mirror some of my faults on some occasions, and I don't want to see those faults. So you are saying, you are saying that it's a protective reaction, self-protective reaction, which means 
you do not want to be hurt. You have been hurt before and you have this image about her or him and you, that image acts as a protection from further hurt. Is that it? So, it is security, resistance, f- being f- her hurt, and so on. Is that the reason why the mind accumulates uh, images about another in relationship? No, it is also a fact that certain persons have certain tendencies. For example, one may be lying a number of times or thieving a number of times. When we look at that person, we take his conduct into consideration when dealing with him. So you are saying you have a conclusions about that person in dealing with that person. You have conclusions about your wife when you are dealing with her. Is that it? You may take the other example that I have given. <laughs> So, sir, the mind accumulates memories about another in relationship in order to protect itself. Right? When I see a person has. Wait, 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 I've come to that, sir. When. And also, when the person has another kind of tendency in that relationship, you. Keep that in mind when you are in that relationship. You remember the tendency and act according to that tendency. It all comes to, basically, doesn't it? I'm just investigating that the mind accumulates this mem- these memories in order not to be heard. Right? Right, sir? Right? Do we agree to, do we see this? What about pleasant memories? What? Memories that are pleasant. Memories that are pleasant. And the memories that are pleasant you pursue. You want more. So I'm asking. The mind is always seeking a state or a a degree in which the mind, it will not be hurt, it wants to be secure, right? No? Why are you so doubtful about this? No, sir? It's trying to avoid pain. Which is to, not to be <laughs> Now, see the consequences of this, sir. See the whole map of it first. Why does the mind get hurt? You know the word innocence? <coughs> The word innocence means a mind that is not capable of being hurt. You understand, sir? No, I won't go into all this. The word innocence means a, a thing that cannot be hurt. So, why does the mind get hurt? Why do you get hurt? Huh? In? Why do you get hurt? Is it just, is it, she's suggesting, she said, you have an image about yourself. Is that it? So you have an image about yourself 
which gets hurt. You may have an image about yourself of being an extraordinary man or woman, or an extraordinary clever chap, or extraordinary uh, spiritual and learned, and that image which you have built about yourself doesn't want to be hurt or shaken or disturbed. Huh? Yes, sir. Though she doesn't have any image. That's right. You say, That's right. Sir, it's a I'm asking, we are human beings, not... So, take yourself and examine yourself, look at yourself. You think or you have an image about yourself, pleasant or unpleasant, whatever it is, and that image you gets hurt very easily. Hmm? Yes, sir, doesn't <laughs> from childhood or recenthood <laughs> it gets hurt. Now, why does the mind get hurt? Proceed, sir, investigate. Why do you get hurt? Because, look, sir, you call me a fool, and I, I get hurt because I think I'm not a fool. Or you call me a oh, marvellous man, and I like that, therefore I'm not hurt. So there is this constant reaction to pleasure and pain, mm-hmm. which is a form of self-protection, a form of an image which I have built about myself. And that image is getting constantly shaken, hurt, bruised, insulted, praised. You follow? That's what's going on. So the mind is seeking constantly security, right? And memory is a factor of security. Right, sir? Memory in relationship with another is a factor of security. Because if I had no memory of the insult which I have received from another, my mind then is capable of looking at that person totally differently, isn't it? So, I, from childhood, through education, through the tradition, through family, through my other little friends, I get terribly hurt. And that goes on building, building all through life. And now I have an image about my, myself which has been terribly hurt. And the mind being hurt wants to protect itself. The protection is in the past, which I know. You understand? Right, sir? The protection is in the past, not in the future or in the immediate now, it's always in the past. Now, so the past acts as a security in relationship, right, sir? Is it, please, right, we agree, uh, not agree, we see this? Now, this is observation, isn't it? Now, what shall I do not to be hurt? I have been hurt. I have been bruised. I have been kicked around in the office, at home, in the school, in playing fields. I have been bruised, shaken, beaten. What shall I do? Keep this image? And if I don't keep the image, how am I? How is the mind to be free of that image? You, you follow, sir? Now, now let's come back to it. How do I? How does the mind free itself from the 
innumerable hurts it has had, sufferings and beastliness of life. How is that mind to be, how is it to rid itself of its hurts? Come on, sir. What, sir? Speak again, sir. Oh, you want me to repeat what I said? What did I say? <laughs> so I, look, sir, I've been hurt. The mind has been hurt. Hmm? From childhood, mother beats me. The school children tease me. The teacher beats. Society hurts. I have the mind is bruised, hurt, and it says, "What shall I do with it?" You understand, sir? Am I to keep it forever, or? Is it possible to be free of it? You understand now, sir? Now, the, well, now, it's no good keeping it, is it? Hmm? Or do you think it's good, worthwhile to keep it? Hmm? Please. So most of us want to be free of it, don't we? Now, what is the way? Not way. How will, do we set about to free the mind? Uh, how does the mind set about to free itself from its thousand hurts, conscious and unconscious hurts? How do you set about it? Don't you, sir, don't we are starting as though n we never talked about any of these things. Now, how do you set? Up, how does the mind set about it? But in your past. Burying the past. Who is the person who buries the past? <laughs> you haven't... Please, sir, just listen to my question first. Haven't you been hurt? Hmm? All of us have been hurt. Yes, sir? Beats. Now, how does the mind free itself from the innumerable collected herds for the last thirty years or eighty years? It sees the self-defense defensive mechanism. Huh? It sees the self-defensive mechanism that is at work to protect itself. So apply it to yourself. Don't discuss abstractly. You have been hurt, haven't you? Huh? You have shed quiet tears or open tears. And what? How will you not be further hurt? That's right. Make yourself as hard as nails. Is that it? <coughs> which means build a wall around yourself, which you have done, not to get hurt. Is that it? What it means. Huh? What it means. I am asking you, sir, how does the mind, which has been terribly bruised, free itself from these bruises? It has to be young, fresh, alive, you know, not, not a brood over these oh my God. You are, are, sir, haven't you, hasn't your mind been hurt? Many times. Then what will you do with it? Slowly just get rid of so, such unpleasant thoughts. Dispel them from the mind. Be, from be, be, be. Be 
third gentleman says, get rid of them one by one, right? Wait, sir, just listen for that question. Get rid of one by one. How many hurts have you? Quite a number. So it will take quite a number of years, will it? <laughs> huh? I am not laughing, sir. No. The point is here, sir. If, sir, that just it. Can I? Can the mind? Sir, can the mind? So, sir, look. I've got dozen thousand hertz, conscious, unconscious hertz, and I see having these hertz destroys the mind. Hmm? It's incapable of clear thinking. It's incapable of seeing anything very clearly. It's incapable of innocency. Hmm? Right, sir? It's incapable of being alive, moving, active, functioning freely. Right? Now, how is that mind to be free of all these hurts? Will Take one by one. Oh my God. Do, don't theorize, sir. Please don't speculate. What am I to do? I've been I've got thousand hurts, concealed and open hurts. And I see very clearly how these hurts distorts life. I'm frightened. I resist. I retire into my own isolation. I'm, I'm frightened to go out. I don't want to be hurt. I live in a sense of great anxiety, misery, confusion. And I don't like that state. So I say, how am I, how is this mind, to be free of all the hurts? Is it possible? Is it possible? I don't know. Therefore, let's investigate. Right, sir? Now, how will you... Now, wait a minute. We are investigating these hurts. Now, who is the investigator? Sir. Hey, wait. Who is the investigator who is looking at the many hurts? You are saying one hurt or one part which you think is not hurt is looking at the other hurts. Is that it? So, one fragment of the mind which has not been hurt hmm, or thinks it has not been hurt examines the many hurts. Now, please just listen. Is there a part of the mind which has not been hurt at all? Uh, please, please look at it, look at it. Sir. We are two friends, you're not. Look at it. Is there any part of your mind that has not been hurt, that has been kept totally innocent, totally unhurt, totally clean, healthy? Follow? Therefore, that's all. So don't assume then that one part can cleanse the hurts of the many fragments, right? Now we are investigating. Now, who is the investigator? The suffering itself. Please, 
You are not doing it, that's why. Who is the investigator? Is the investigator the entity that chooses, says, I will investigate? Is investigation a matter of decision, will? Huh? I think investigation is attention. Now, that just it. Now, wait a minute, sir. So, you are saying, in investigation, there is no investigator. Right, so. uh, go slow, go slow. There is only attention. That's all. Please look at it slowly. I'll go, we'll go into this. The many parts of my mind have been heard, or the totality of the mind has been heard. There is no fragment of the mind which says, I have not been heard. Hmm? If that fragment has never been heard, then it can proceed to devour <laughs> or absolve the other parts which have been heard. But one observes there is no part of the mind that's not been heard. Hmm? So, the inv investigation into this is not a matter of decision or will. It's no good saying, I will investigate. Then, the action of will comes in. And will is one of the factors of resistance which has been hurt. Right, sir? Got it? No, I don't know if you... Hmm? When I say I will investigate, the decision to investigate is made by who? Huh? Yes, which is part, which is again, you follow? So, investigation is not a matter of choice, matter of decision or will. Therefore, investigation implies attention. Right? To attend is to observe. Now, my, my, the mind has been hurt, and I am a, the mind now says, I will see what takes place when I am completely attentive, in which there is no observer who is the deciding factor. Right? Got it, sir? Mr. Narasimha Chari. Huh? Because what starts the investigation is the knowledge bring her either direct or you are somebody else. Yeah. No. I like to get rid of the No, I'm not the like what started is that What started just me. What started investigation is very simple. I see around me human beings which have been terribly hurt. Hmm? And all their actions are born of that hurt. I'm taking, generalizing too much. And those actions, born of hurt, create such mischief in the world, hmm? in relationship, in action, in various forms, that action born of hurt distorts action. And it's causing misery. I observe this. And I say to myself, why does the mind get hurt at all? I, there's no motive in operation. I don't want to be free of hurt. Why does the mind get hurt? 
does it get hurt because it is seeking protection, therefore resisting, building a wall round itself, and the very fact that it is building a wall round itself is the factor of being hurt. Right? So, investigation then is not, has no motive. <laughs> right, sir? There is no motive so far. And the mind says, why? What is the reason of these hurts? Not that it wants to get rid of them or go beyond them. Then the motive operation, motive factor comes in. He says, why is the mind hurt? Your mind, my mind, a thousand people's mind, why does it get hurt? Does it get hurt because it has in, built an image about itself? It's, it looks like it. Therefore, says, have I, the mind says, have I an image about myself? And it says, yes, I have many images about myself. Not only about you, but about myself, I have great many images. And these images get hurt. Hmm? So far there is no motive. Now, why do these images exist at all? Right, sir? Right? Why do they exist? <laughs> Don't guess. Don't guess. Don't guess. Yes. Now, that's part of the mechanical system, mechanical response of a brain, hmm, which says, I must not be hurt. Because the brain functions efficiently only when it is completely secure. Right, sir? <laughs> Don't get you secure. Like a child functions happily, easily when it when it feels secure. The brain, with all the thousands of cells in it. Not that I'm a biologist. I haven't read about it. One can observe it in oneself. That brain can function when it is completely safe. Hmm? Completely secure. Right? So it seeks, it is constantly seeking security. Right? So it's seeking security in the image it has built about itself. Follow this, sir. Or it finds security in some neur neurotic belief. Nationality, God, uh, communism, all the rest of it. So, the brain demands total security. And security means total order. Right? Since it is demanding it, it must find it. It finds it in the image, or in a formula or in some neurotic belief, uh, there is God, there is no God, communism is the only way out, and so on, so on, so on. Now, is, does an image give security? I'm investing, I'm not, there's no motive still. Does image give security? The brain thinks it does, but does it actually? Obviously not. Because the Muslim has an image, and I, have an, I must explain this. We were caught it, but I must. And so, the Muslim, the Muslim, Pakistan and I, the Hindu, have images, and they are at war. So, in image there is no security, nor in formula. Watch this, sir, what is happening to the brain, watch it. There is no security in image, 
formula, ideals, in past memories. Right? So the brain says, it, I sought security in these things, it doesn't exist, I see. Right? So where is that security which I have sought? If it isn't in any of these, then where is it? Wait, hold it, hold it, don't. Where is it? Huh? What? Which means what? Please, do it with yourself, don't guess. I have sought, my, the brain has sought security in all these images, conclusions, in the statues, in saviors, in guru, security. Hmm? And the brain says, by Job, there is no security in any of these. Hmm? Even in my neurotic beliefs, there isn't any. So is there security? Yes, wait, sir, don't answer it. Is there security? If there is no security, the brain goes to pieces. Because it cannot function without security, which is order. And if you say there is no security at all, then it says, well, I'm, I live in total disorder, which is much better, <laughs> which is what is happening. So, is there security? If it isn't in any of these, right, sir? No, you're not moving. Come. If none of these walk. Now, when does the brain say it doesn't exist any of these? In none of these, the brain says, is there security? When does that say it? No, sir. Do you, you who said just now, do you say there is no security in belief? Hmm? Wait, 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 wait. Do you say that? Huh? It's just a verbal statement or act? Then you're not Hindu. Huh? Are you? Oh, you see how we don't. Are you a Hindu? I am a Hindu by birth. Then why do you put these marks, sacred thread, puja, comes up, face these things? You see how we can't face these things. So, when the mind seals the falls, hmm? right, sir? These are false, and in these there has been no security. The mind, seeing the false, what takes place in the mind? What gives the capacity, just what gives the capacity to the brain to see the false? <laughs> How quickly you... Do uh, take two seconds to observe, sir. You've got thousand beliefs, images. You are a Hindu. You do this. You have sacred thread or no sacred thread. You put on this and that. You've got thousand beliefs, conclusions, opinions. And the brain said by Joe, to, I must have an opinion about something, otherwise I'm insecure. And it said, we have been through all this, and it says now, there is no security in any of this. Right? Now, what is this quality of the mind that says there is no security in any of these? 
あ
So you must also move. You can't say, you can't merely keep on repeating, mind is different from the image. Mind, we said, is thought, is time, is the result of thousands of years of culture, memory, evolution. Otherwise, the mind doesn't exist at all. So the mind is, through reaction of thought, creates the image. So mind is the fabricator, is the manufacturer of the image. So wait, wait, I agree. You create, the, it manufactures the image and throws it out, but the machine is not the image. Obviously. But the machine is producing images all the time. But you are not the machine. You are not the machine, but you don't have to identify yourself. Ah, and now begins. Let's see. Machine is... No, you see, no, we've been through all this, my darling. The question is, thought creates the image. Thought is the reaction of memory. And we've been through all this, haven't we? So, What is the quality of the brain, mind, which sees all the images, all the statements, conclusions, assertions, are not safe place, there is no security in them, either in the past or in the future. What gives the mind that quality of saying, this is, there is no security in any of these? No, quite so. We'll come to that. Go step by step. I don't know, let's investigate. Yes, we are investigating. <laughs> yes, we are investigating. What is it that gives the mind this quality to see the false? <laughs> what is the quality? <laughs> So what, what makes you say this is false or that is true? Your prejudice? Observation. Huh? Observing my mind. And I find that all No, but Madam, I ask, what gives the... What makes the mind say this is false? Huh? No, sir, no, look, sir, <laughs> what makes you say now, after an hour and a quarter of investigation, what makes you say there is no security in any of these? Disappointed. <laughs> huh? What did you say? Inside, right? What gave you? The, what is insight? No, please don't look at it. What is this insight that says, "By I've looked at all these things that are false." Uh, so you're not you are not working. You are just theorizing. What gives you this insight? What? What? Have you got that? <laughs> Or you just theorize. Sir, don't laugh. Have you got that intelligence or are you just theorizing? <laughs> sir, look, sir. We said it, mind is the maker of the image. The image is not separate from the mind. The mind may throw out the image, but it has created it. It's always creating it. Therefore, the image maker is the image. Obviously, so that's simple. Now, and it says, after this investigation now, it says, in none of these is there security. All right? What makes the mind say that? <clears throat> Mm. 
because <laughs> you don't take time, so take little time and look what makes the mind. Huh? The path which is free, you which is free, which has never been hurt. The path? Which is that path? We have been, we have been through all that, madam. No. We've just... I don't believe it. Not a question of belief. Not a question of belief, a question of knowledge. Not all of you is being hurt. Oh, so there is... No, oh, that's it, you see. That's another conclusion. I echo. That's all, you are living in a conclusion, that there is a part of you which is not hurt. Uh, that's it. So there is a Brahman God in you which is not hurt. There is, there, we, we, there is part of you which is the uh, cosmic consciousness or the Atman, the Brahman, the, the higher spirit that cannot be hurt and therefore that can never throw out images, go back to that and everything is free. You are, these are all conclusions which have been est uh, for a thousand years. Now I'm saying, do go into this little bit. What makes the mind say, any form of conclusion that I make, any form of assertions that I make, any form of belief that I have or think it is not a belief but my real understanding are all conclusions. And the mind demands security, brain cells demand security. And it says, in none of these is there security. Now, please, sir, what is that that says there is no security in any of these? The present moment. The present moment. Oh, sir? He says, the capacity to make other images. Now, sir, écoute, nous avons... I must speak in English, pardon. We have abolished all images. I mean, inwardly, actually, not theoretically. We said all images, in any form, gives no security. What is the mind that says there is no security in any belief? In any conclusion. Is that a copy? I want you to work. When the mind stops, it raises the images. Come on. Right. Now, you say something and you really don't experience or really see it and the words come out. You said, you say awareness in the, of all this, hmm? being aware of all the falseness, hmm? in that awareness is security. How? My God. No, sir, have you understood this? You understand, sir? I have been attentive. We said attention is the quality of investigation. Attention, in investigation there is no investigator, because it's a movement. And in that investigation we see that any form of conclusion, opinion, judgment, belief, formulas, no security. The attention is going on, right? It is the attention and the quality of attention is that intelligence which says, in none of these is there security. So there is security in that intelligence. You got it, sir? 
So in that attention there is complete security. There is insecurity when there is no attention. Right? Huh? That attention is silent. What, sir? I said that attention is silent. He's silent. That's silent. And now, don't describe it, please. Attention. Look, we have paid attention, for at least one or two of us have, paid attention right from the beginning till now. In that attention, we investigate. Investigated, that's to trace out. Without the investigator, we went into that. In that attention, we see that any form of conclusion, any form, the highest and the lowest, uh, any form saying, I am God, you're, there is in me the purity, and so on, so on, all of that, hmm, is a conclusion in which the the brain takes security, feels security. And you see in that attention and investigation that any conclusion is, has no validity. Therefore, security is in attention, in that state of attention. Right? So that attention is order. I don't know. And there, why do you want any other year? You got it, sir? You don't follow? What is attention? Huh? What is attention? What? What is attention? What is attention? What is attention? That which you haven't paid during the hour. <laughs> Don't laugh, sir, please. This is. I'm not being funny. Sir, you would not ask that question if you have been even partially attentive. You have. You at, when you attend, that is, when you look with attention at a tree, at your friend, at the house, at the moving cloud, in that state of attention there is no image. This stateless state of mind in which there is no image is attention. Oh, come on, sir. No, don't make this into something you remember and practice and you know, <laughs> play around with. <coughs> so to observe fear is also attending on that. That was something we were discussing yesterday. Oh, no, sir. No, sir. When there is fear, that is a state of inattention. When there is fear, you are not, the mind is not attentive. It's only when there is inattention, conclusions, images, fears, and all that take place. Then you will say to me, How am I to have this attention? Right? Right, sir? Then go to your guru, <laughs> because he will tell you how to practice attention, right? Which is, practicing implies me mechanical habit, right? Attention is non-mechanical habit. There is no habit in attention. We meet again on Thursday, if you want.